What is one of the most overlooked American weapons of the Second World War? It's the grease gun, more officially designated as the US submachine gun caliber 45 M3. In this video, we will be discussing the history and reasoning as to why the grease gun came about, as well as some statistics about the M3 and its lasting legacy on today's world. Now, when one pictures American submachine guns of the Second World War, they picture images like a paratrooper armed with the world famous Thompson. The Thompson was great, but it was not perfect. In fact, by the time the war came around, the Thompson had already existed for nearly two decades. It was also quite expensive to manufacture, with prices ranging from $209 to $45 by the end of the war. So, in 1941, US Army Ordnance Board saw the cost and field effectiveness of the British thin gun and the German MP40. So they decided that they would go into developing and producing an American version of their own. And quickly came about the requirements of being all sheet metal construction, chambering a 45 ACP, a fire rate under 500 rounds per minute, and the ability to place accurate shots on a 6x6 foot target at 50 yards. The initial prototype was the T20. It was only capable of fully automatic fire, and it saw great success during its trials, with only one major malfunction resulting from the magazine falling. However, this issue would not be addressed prior to the T20 being adopted and redesignated as the M3. One of the great incentives to adopt the M3 was that the production cost was greatly reduced due to its simplistic build. In fact, it cost approximately $15 during the war to produce. And that's due that only a few parts were needed to be precision milled, and the rest being stamped and welded together. It had a simplistic safety, that being the hinge ejection port dust cover. This not only prevented the weapon from being able to be fired while closed, it also protected the bolt and the inner workings of the system from the environment. It had a smooth fire rate of 450 rounds per minute, allowing the operator to maintain complete control unlike the Thompson 700 rounds per minute. It had an effective range of 100 yards due to the sights being fixed at that range, with a 30 round detachable magazine. Very quickly after the M3 first saw service, the improved version, the M3A1, came out. This version had several improvements that led to increased reliability and better field qualities. The original charging crank was removed in favor of a slot and the bolt that the user could simply pull back with the finger to charge the system. It was made simpler to remove the barrel. Instead of removing the crank and the trigger guard prior to removing the barrel, one could simply unscrew it on the A1. Due to the removal of some parts, it came in slightly lighter at 7.95 pounds empty compared to the 8.15 pounds of the original M3. Now the M3 first saw usage in the summer of 1944, as the Army began to phase out the Thompson production by this time in the war. Very rarely you can find the 9mm conversion done for it, and this is due to America's allies preferring it in Europe, as the Germans would have it on hand, so it was easier to get than having to rely on resupplies of 45 ACP, as well as some sound suppressors were made for the M3 and they're requested by the OSS. The M3 saw service in the Korean War, in fact it was the main submachine gun of the Korean War, as the communists used the Thompson that the US supplied them in the Second World War. The M3 would also see usage by special forces units, such as Delta Force, mainly due to its performance with the sound suppressor. However, it was quickly replaced by the MP5. In the mainstream American military, it would still see usage until 1990s. This is where in the Gulf War it was still serving as a secondary weapon for some armored crews. The grease gun saw some copies made by the Chinese with the Type 36 and the Type 37. And since the Second World War, it has seen use by over 30 nations. Although originally intended to replace all Thompson orders, towards the end of the war, the Thompson would still outnumber the M3 in the field 3 to 1. That's not to say the M3 didn't continue on in usage. In fact, it became widely used by many nations to this day, and even by American tank crews until the 90s. And with that said, we're going to wrap up another video. I just want to say thank you everyone for all the support recently. In fact, I want you to leave any feedback you have for me below. It's always appreciated. It helps me improve the quality of these videos. And with that said, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.